Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 11th, 2024 New Moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps this channel be seen by the YouTube algorithm, and it helps me out tremendously. So thank you so very much for doing so. Now let's see what the tarot has to say. All right, so we have the Seven of Swords reverse, which is fantastic. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. We then have the Seven of Pentacles. We have this card that turned itself around. We have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. We have the Eight of Pentacles, angels. We have the Lovers. And we have the Eight of Wands reversed. Okay, so during this time, during this new moon, things are going to seem to be moving slower. And we can see this depending on how moon sensitive we are from new moon to full moon or from new moon to new moon. So do be mindful about this. We're going to be thinking it should be moving a lot quicker than it actually is. So just being aware of this energy during this time is going to be important because we're going to be frustrated. We're going to feel like we're stuck. And yet... We're not going to know exactly why. And that's because we we have that sense of it should be moving a lot faster than it is. So even if it's moving at a good clip, we still want it to be faster. So just being aware of that energy is really important. We have the repeat of the number seven. We then have the repeat of the number eight. Number eight energy, we can be a little bit too serious. So just be mindful about that. But it really does also help us be very good at work, be very good at like, you know, analyzing things, looking at things. So we can be very meticulous during this time. The number seven being repeated means that we're also seeking for deeper truth. We're seeking for deeper answers. We aren't going to necessarily go down the most conventional path. So a more esoteric approach to things is going to feel very natural to us or very comfortable to us during this time. But also be mindful. Seven is a number of truth. So as we go down this path, as we are, are looking for things, if we, if we say something that isn't true, we're going to be called out. Even if somebody else says something more outlandish right next to us, it's like, why the heck am I being called out? And they're not like, you know, why it's kind of like when somebody does something big, that's wrong and you do something small and you get punished for it and, and they don't. So here there's, there's just going to be that energy. So just be mindful that during this time, you can be a little bit frustrated, Scorpio, with people being like, oh, well, Scorpio, that wasn't a nice thing to say, or, oh, that wasn't exactly true. And yet somebody else said something that was completely false and they're not called out. So just being aware of that is going to be important because it's going to be a little bit frustrating. With the Queen of Pentacles reverse, this is Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And this is also important because this new moon is in Capricorn. We're in Capricorn time period with, with the sun as well. So the Queen of Pentacles reverse is really aligning with the energy of yeah, they're really aligning with the energy of Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn, which is until the 20th, which brings a less positive aspect of Capricorn forward, meaning that it's very top-down structure. It's very rule-based. It's very, you know, A, B, C, like very regiment, regimented, militaristic almost. And we're going to see that we, we rebel against this. If we have earth sign energy in our chart, if we have earth sign energies in our lives, we can feel restrained. And we also have another, you know, energy coming in astrologically speaking, where we already feel restrained. So just being aware of this can be very important. We can also find it hard to nurture the seeds that we're planting. We can find it hard to, you know, kind of like take the time to nurture what we want. It could be good habits, could be our resolutions that we set for 2024. You know, we can just be finding it hard to nurture things during this time, especially also ourselves. So with the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles is very much seeing how things are intertwined, but also taking care of nurturing, guiding, leading. And we can just feel like we don't have the patience for that. Like somebody else can do that. We want to, to go achieve, succeed, and go after. With the Eight of Pentacles, again, very work-oriented during this time. We can really throw ourselves into our work or what we value as much as money and just be absolutely consumed by it. With the Lovers Reverse, this is Gemini energy. So if we have Gemini in our chart, if we have Gemini in our lives, we can be a little bit out of harmony with them during this time. So just be mindful with this. Be mindful that this part of our personality can be causing us a little bit of difficulty or being like just frustrating coming up. But this is also lust. So we can really like instant gratification during this time. And I mean, who doesn't? But we need to be mindful about that, Scorpio, to not fall into only, you know, instant gratification, but to really look at, okay, 
you know, what do I love? What am I building? Not what am I lusting after? You know, what am I looking for to have that dopamine high type of thing? So just being aware of that during this time is going to be an important thing. So let's see what spirit has to say. And if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, put a snowflake in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced in a completely separate video on the 1st of February. So keep your eyes open for that. Don't be scanned by anybody contacting you in the comment box. It will not be me. You will be contacting me and all the directions will be in the video. So good luck. And if you are interested in purchasing a private reading, a private personalized meditation, or healing, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. So let's see what spirit has to say. And here we have centered. It is going to be so important for us, Scorpio, to center ourselves, to calm things down, to breathe out, and to align. It will be very easy for us to get off-centered during this time or to feel like we're pulled in many different directions. So really embracing being centered, really embracing calm and a clarity of being is going to be very important. It moves us then to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is I am presence reverse. Now this is one of my favorite cards. So an I am presence, this is the crown chakra. The I am presence is I am what? I am fabulous, I am successful, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am, you know, a pleasure on this earth. And I mean, that can sound egotistical, but if you move forward in that energy with humility and love, you know, with kindness and gentleness, that's an extraordinary place to be an extraordinary energy to come from. But if we come from a more negative energy, you know, I am sad and I am overwhelmed and I am stressed and I am barely making it and I am just keeping my head above water and I am, you know, worth nothing and I am never going to live up to any of my dreams. You know, just even saying that gave me a bit of a headache because all those thoughts in each and every one of us, no matter how positively we try to live, they always seem to be right on the outskirts of our mind and our being. And people say, Dane, why do you say the negative as well as the positive? Like only say the positive things. Because when people say the positive, I'm like, I'm right there with them. Like raise it and praise it. I, I get it, right? I'm right there with you, believing the best in me. But then you start to say the negative. And it's like, oh yeah, I believe that. Oh, I said that yesterday. Or, oh my gosh, I thought that five seconds ago, you know? So here it's just being open and honest with us and hearing it and being able to feel it. You know, it gives it power. So the I am presence here is reversed. We're not paying attention, Scorpio, to the power of our mind to the power of our connection with our thoughts and our manifestation of what we want in life. Yes, we can't just think ourselves rich. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily work that way, though some would argue it does. I still think it takes a bit of grit and, 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 and gumption to us. But what we're going to see here is that we have to be present in our mind. And spirit is re reminding us of that and saying, connect with your crown chakra. See the crown that you're placing upon, upon your head. See the power that's guiding you forward. It moves us then to the energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And this is rebirth. We're transforming. It's interesting because we're represented by the death card in the major arcana. So we're all about transforming. But we are a bit skeptical about this rebirth, a bit skeptical about stepping forward into ourselves. So just being mindful about that rebirth energy, just being mindful about the transformation of who we are and where we're headed, that we are fighting this in one way or another. So acknowledging it is going to be super important for us. Yeah, that spirit is leading us to a change and we're like, oh no, I don't know if I want to go there. Now, do know that 2024 is all about what do you want to build in your life? It's also about finding joy in the simplicity of things, scaling back, standing back, and saying what is sacredly important. So this new moon is at 20 degrees, 44 minutes of Capricorn, all right? It is, it's a powerful moon. It's a powerful moon that's coming forward. The new moon is trying Uranus, which brings inspiration and good fortune coming forward. And, and we see that here. We see that with the seven of pentacles, we're planting seeds, we're being patient. You know, the seven of swords reverse, we're releasing a lot of lies, a lot of negativities, a lot of hurts, a lot of pains, a lot of things that don't need to be in our conscious sphere anymore. A lot of lies are being released. And so Scorpio, we can get also a little bit upset or a lot of bit upset. It's like, why was I believing in XYZ? 
Why was I held by these lies, these thoughts? Be mindful again that Pluto is at 29 degrees of Capricorn till the 20th, which can bring out the less positive aspect of Capricorn. And we're going to feel that because of the Queen of Pentacles reverse. Mars is out of bounds till the 23rd of January. And this brings more extreme emotion forward. We're not really one to really like super extreme emotions coming at us. It's, it's a water sign thing. We we can feel very overwhelmed by it. So just be mindful about that. We can look then with the extreme emotions coming from all over the place and really disturbing things. We can look at the lust of things, the instant gratification of things instead of the deeper love. So do be mindful here of that as well with the lovers reversed. The dwarf planet Eris moves stationary direct at 24 degrees of Aries, which brings justice and truth to the forefront. And we can feel like not only do we get called out, but we're going to be calling out other people. It's like, no, that's not true. That's not right. So just be aware of this energy here, especially with the repeat of the number seven. Mars is trying Jupiter, which is astoundingly enthusiastic, very much a go-getter energy. And we see that here, again, with the Eight of Pentacles. We're, we're going to be so diligent, so so precise, so careful about how we're moving things forward. Not in a negative way, not like, oh my gosh, but in a way like you're handling fine china. In a way, like you, you're, I, I'm just seeing a potter's wheel for some reason, and I don't know, somebody is either a potter who is listening or does pottery. I, I have never, but it sounds, it's, it seems interesting. The energy around this is really quite fun and, and calming. So that's lovely, but it's going to be, I'm just seeing it like handling the potter's wheel or the clay on the potter's wheel. Like you have to be more gentle, but also firmer than you think you have to be. So I'm just seeing that energy come forward. I don't know if that's true or not with pottery, but that's very interesting. It says gentle, gentler, but firmer than you think you have to be. And that's what's coming through with the eight of pentacles, also focusing on what's important, you know, what prosperity, what, what do I need? What do I want? You know, what is it that I value with the eight of pentacles? Also, there's the sense of, I can throw all of me into this energy, right? I can throw all of me into you know, finances or what I value as much as money. So being aware of this is going to be super important. Mars is powering Ixion, the dwarf planet Ixion during this time in Capricorn, which is really having us being asked, are we living by the rules that are right for where we are? And it's not, you know, the rules of our country, you know, or anything like that. It's the rules that govern us, our rules that we are telling ourselves, what we are trying to prove. Are they right for us? Are we living by the right rules for where we are in life? And that's a big question that comes forward. It's like, it's not new, normally something we, we ever ask. And with the eight of, of ones reverse, we do feel a bit stuck. So we can be feeling like, oh, it's out there, right? But it's going to be in here. It's going to be in ourselves that the stuckness is coming from. So are we living by the right set of rules? Are we looking at things and saying, is this right for me? Is this where I need to be? Is this, you know, powerfully moving me forward. Mercury is conjunct the galactic center. And this is a big deal because Mercury is the messenger and the, the mind. And we have this energy aligned with the cosmos mind, the mind of the cosmos. And so when we have the I am presence coming forward reverse, we, we are having trouble connecting with that cosmic mind, which is interesting because as a, a Scorpio, we are so connected with the veil between the worlds. We are so connected that people sit there and they are like, oh, Scorpio's mysterious, sneaky, you know, sexy, this, that. But it's because you have this air of mystery to you. You know, Scorpios are so intriguing, just so intriguing. You know, a, a Scorpio that is aligned with their energy correctly is the most beautiful thing in the whole entire world. I don't mean to call you a thing, but you know, like the most beautiful energy in the whole entire world. A Scorpio that is not aligned with their energy is, can be terrifying. So but that's that's with everybody. So just knowing that energy here as we're moving forward, the Queen of Pentacles reverse, we have to ask ourselves, what do we want to plant? But also, what are we afraid to nurture? What are we afraid to nurture in ourselves, Scorpio? And for ourselves, what is it that we need to open the door to? And that's going to be a big thing. Listening to the Galactic Center, listening just to the world around us, that's going to be important. The new moon is squared the North Lunar Node which is our collective soul. So we're going to be really feeling the collective soul of the world. We're sensitive to it. We are, we just are being aware of that. 
you know, slowly planting the seeds of what we want and what we need and what we're looking for in our lives, knowing that we are sensitive to this energy, that we are, are moving forward in a way that is, that we can either be hiding from this energy or moving forward in a way that is more us than ever before. So being aware of that is important. Saturn is sextile Jupiter, which is very positive energy when it comes to good finances and when it also comes to building our business, building our careers. So that is fantastic. Now, here's where things get a little bit hairy, a little bit tricky, a little bit interesting. The dwarf planet Gung Kung is conjunct Saturn. Now, this alignment, Gung Kung is also linked to flooding. So we can see flooding in the world at large. But we can also see flooding of energy within ourselves. The floodgates are opened. This alignment can bring an overwhelming sense of constraint, an overwhelming sense of like, I have to hold it all in. Constriction, holding back. This is not only in our daily lives, but also in our psychic and emotional existence. The psychic and emotional energy coming at us. So we feel constrained. We feel like we can't fully step into the power of the Queen of Pentacles, step into the prosperity, the success of us. We, we feel like, Things can't move fast, even though we want them to. And what do we love? We don't know. I don't know. Because we feel constrained. And we would rather have moments of glimpses of, of euphoria or happiness or, you know, distraction than to focus on coming out of this constraint and into what we love. So being aware of that is super important. And if you want to dive deeper into this, then I highly recommend Pam Gregory's channel here on YouTube. She's absolutely brilliant. And I have her linked in the description box below. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Well, let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. No, yeah, it should be here. Okay. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. So it's really interesting here is that we have the new moon in Scorpio right here. And we have the we have the full moon in Scorpio right here. And we have the new moon in Scorpio at the other end, you know, beginning and ending this journey. So this is this is an interesting time for us. We are very affected by this moon, but we're also very much wanting it to dance to the beat of our drum. And this moon is like, no. You're going to dance to the beat of my drum. So it can be a bit uncomfortable for us and it will be a bit uncomfortable for us. So just being aware of that is important. We have abundance here reversed and we have luck is on your side reversed. As lies are released, we're not going to feel abundant. We're going to feel lied to. We're going to feel like we wasted time. We're going to feel angry and frustrated and overwhelmed. And we're not going to see that luck is on our side. What we're going to see is, is frustration. And Spirit is saying here, hey, step back. Step back and stop. Because abundance is on your side. The lies that we follow for one reason or another, they were followed in the moment because we thought either it was right, we didn't know they were lies. And acknowledging that and saying, okay, now I step forward. Now I step forward, releasing the past and being able to step into the abundance of the present. The abundance of of my power, of my authenticity, of my direction of soul and self. And it brings us then to it's time to release negative energy and change. Now, both of these are reversed over the seven of pentacles. So over the patience, over the waiting, we have here, I don't want to release the negativity. I don't want to release the energy. It's not, I don't want to release negativity because we're all like, of course, I want to release negativity, but I don't want to release the energy that I've become comfortable in. And that will change. That will change us if I release the, the energy that I've been comfortable in, that I've been stewing in, the, the trauma drama that I've known forever. You know, what will that bring me? It will bring me change. 
and I don't want everything to change because it's better, you know, the, the devil, you know, type of thing. So just being aware of this during this time, that there's a tremendous amount of change that's moving forward with us. There's a tremendous amount of realization, understanding, opening that's coming. And we're, we're like, oh no, oh no, it's going to be terrible. It's not going to be terrible. It's going to be different. And different isn't bad. And it's going to be exciting. Actually, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. So just be aware of this. We have the Queen of Pentacles reversed, okay? And over this, we have resistance because we have tried to be crushed. And then we have you and your loved ones are safe, reversed. So the resistance is that somebody has tried to, to crush us down. We have the Queen of Pentacles. We need to nurture. We need to take care of. We might be a bit burnt out and that's okay. You know, sometimes in life, we're always expected to take care of, to, to nurture this, to do this, to do that. And we might be burnt out. So saying, you know what? No, I'm burnt out. I'm overwhelmed. That's okay. You don't have to handle everything. You don't have to jump when everybody says jump. They can all wait a minute. You and your loved ones are safe. You're not feeling like everything is secure. You're feeling like, no, I still have, to, I have a long way to go or a lot to work on. But knowing that you are taken care of, even if you don't feel that way, knowing that the universe has us, knowing that, you know, life is beautiful and powerful and that it's not always fair. No, it isn't. You know, nature, people say, oh, I believe in nature, right? Because it's always so beautiful. It's not always. We don't have always. We don't have absolutes in this world. We have everything in the myriad shade of gray. And that's going to be important here. The energy is gaining momentum as we embrace the darkness. This is reversed because we have the eight of pentacles. We're wanting to stave off the the darkness. We're going to see that we really like the light, right? And I've been reading more and more about natural cycles of, of light and living in the natural cycle of, of the world, which of the earth, which sounds super hard <laughs> and also super lovely. So just looking at this during this time with the energy is gaining momentum. It's like, okay, what is gaining momentum for me to step into the power of myself, for, for me to look at where I need to be and what happens when I quiet the world? What happens when the darkness gets to come in and I'm not fighting it off with our light pollution and, and light and everything that we think it's supposed to be. So here during this time with the, with the eight of pentacles, with the working, with the diligence to slow it down and let it in the darkness is going to be so important. A new romantic cycle begins and that's in the upright position. It's over the lovers, which is interesting. The lovers is reversed. And so here we have that energy of like, no, no, it's not a new romantic cycle. Like it's not embracing the love. It's not the passion that we want, but a new romantic cycle begins in our wisdom. It's not looking at the lust of things, the instant gratification. We're going to be seeing it. It's like, oh, okay. That's the instant gratification of it. We're no longer looking at that, but we're going to be looking at what is the new romantic cycle of my heart, my soul, and what I want within my life. We work through our fears. And that's a lot of what this moon is for us. This new moon is telling us, hey, listen, work through your fears, see this, face this. We are going to realize, we're going to come to the realization, okay, that we are the key. But that is something that's going to come slowly and most likely not, you know, instantaneously within this new moon, but time afterwards where we realize, oh, oh, there's more here than meets the eye. Oh, you know, that wasn't the way I needed to define myself. And it brings us then to our subconscious spirit message. And this is white light to work on healing, to work on the healing connection with ourselves. Light is going to be really important. Candle meditations is going to be important and connecting with the rhythm of the light of the earth. But also if we're in a dark climate, right, right now, and it's winter and it becomes dark, like, you know, four, getting one of those, those, what are they called? Mood lights. It's not mood lights, but lights that imitate the sun. That's going to be very powerful for us. It can really help benefit us and, you know, give, give our bodies that, that boost that they need. So just be aware of that. Our subconscious chakra message is the inner child reverse, the heart chakra. We need to connect with our inner child. It's so important. It's something we're not wanting to do right now for one reason or another. We're busy. We're looking at things a certain way, but spirit is saying here, hey, listen, connect with your inner child. That's just going to be one of the most powerful things for you. We could do the meditation. If you've been here before, you know it, where you take a nice deep breath in, exhale whenever it feels comfortable for you. And visualize yourself standing as you are now with your arms opened and having the child that you once were run into your arms and tell that child, I love you. I'm here for you. I will always be here for you. I will always listen to you. 
you are important to me. That is so important for us to hear. That is so important for us to connect to ourselves that way. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, and it's the Lord reversed. It is people wanting to have power over us, or us also wanting to have power over things, right? There's the sense of might equals right. And we don't usually abide by that or like that, but there's that energy coming through. It's like might equals right. And that's going to be something that comes up during this time. This is also Aries energy. So we can be having a difficult time with Aries if it's in our chart, if it, if we have an Aries in our lives. So just be aware of this during this time. But there, there's going to be the sense of like force can make it happen. And it's like, yeah, it can, but at what cost? Our subconscious tarot message is the Ace of Cups. And this is important for us because we are represented by the cups in the minor arcana. So God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe is handing us a gift of healing, beautiful love. Our emotions come intense during this time. We are feeling things more openly, more honestly, more powerfully than before. Are we fully taking this gift? Not, not really, because we don't have the queen of cups or, you know, a, a court card of the cups or the magician coming in with the cups in their hands or even the temperance card holding the cups. So just be mindful. Just be mindful that subconsciously our heart is calling to us. We're not fully taking the gift of what the, our heart is offering, but we will be. So being aware of this is, is important, it's powerful, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It can lead to tears, right? We can find that emotions overwhelm us, that they're intense, that they guide us, that it opens up our eyes and our hearts in, in ways that we hadn't imagined. It brings us to our subconscious Luna message. We have surrender. And we have look at the bigger picture, reversed. We're not looking at the big picture. We tend to be very detail oriented during this time. So we have a little bit of difficulty stepping back Scorpio and looking at the bigger picture as we surrender to this moon, but also as we surrender to the world, as we look at things and start to find a simple, a simple joy, a simple calm, as we start to release chaos, we are going to see that we're opening up our world and ourselves like never before. All right. All right. Scorpio, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please know that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.